Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Yasin, and this right here is the Pocophone F1, and I've been using it as my main phone, my late, my daily driver for the last two weeks, and I even took it on vacation out to Arizona, and I have mixed feelings about this phone, but ultimately at the end of the day, I went back to my Pixel 3, and I'm gonna tell you guys why in this video. So let's start things off with the build quality. It's made out of plastic, it feels cheap in the hands, and it just doesn't have premium feel to it. But that's expected because this phone costs $350. Here is the tagline. Snapdragon 845, six or eight gigs of RAM, 128 or 256 gigs of storage for around $350 here in the US. Now, if any tech enthusiast heard that statement, it would definitely catch their attention or anybody that's in the market for a new cell phone, that would definitely catch their attention. So you gotta understand that Xiaomi had to make some sacrifices and some cuts, and build quality is one of those places that they made the cuts. But I went ahead and just applied a skin to it because the way a skin feels is the same whether it's on a glass back, metal back, or plastic back. So if you don't mind applying skins to your phones to get rid of that plastic feeling, then it's a quick and easy fix, and skins are around $10 anyway. I'll leave links for the ones I have down below in the description. And the rest of the phone, you have the power button on the right-hand side and the volume rockers right on top of that. They did keep the headphone jack right on top, and then on the bottom, you have the USB-C fast charging port and then two grills, which are supposed to be speaker grills, but spoiler alert, only one of them is a speaker grill. The other one, I think it may just house the mic. So keep that in mind. So that's just the physical design of the phone. There's nothing that jumps out at you or it's not trying to catch anybody's attention, which I don't actually mind that. I like the undertone look and feel of the phone. So I was okay with it once I applied the skin. And then you turn the phone around and you get to that display. So this is a 6.18 inch display and it comes in at 1080p. And overall, with my use on this phone, I didn't mind the display. Watching videos was great. It got bright enough and I didn't have any issue in terms of just how vibrant the colors were. They're not as great as an OLED display and if you do hold it next to a phone like the Pixel 3, then you can definitely see that there's a difference in the display. One is an LCD panel and the other one's an OLED panel. So yeah, if you hold it to higher premium phones, then you'll definitely see that it is lacking, but if you're using it by itself and you're just out and about, I don't think you have any problems with it. My problem actually came with the notch. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of notch. One of the reasons why I went with the Pixel 3 rather than the Pixel 3 XL, but this notch takes it to another level. It is extremely big to the point that it cuts off notifications. Like the only thing it has space for is the clock on the left hand side and then the battery percentage and your network connections on the right hand side. And sometimes when you get notifications, you don't even notice it because there's nothing indicating that there is a notification in the notification tray. There's no badges, no icons or nothing like that. Like I would go about half an hour to an hour sometimes not knowing that I got a notification and that was really frustrating. I mean, you can turn off the notch in the settings, but that still doesn't fix the whole notification issue because they still show up in that black area because that notch is taking up that much space in the middle. Now there is a LED light on the phone that could be customized in the settings for notifications and a bunch of different stuff, but for some reason it's on the bottom of the phone and not on the top. And normally when I'm looking for notifications, I just take a quick glance on the top of the phone. So I wish they would have moved that to the top and that would have really made a little bit of a difference, but that is the only issue that I had with the display. Okay, so we got past the design and we got past that display. And then you start actually using the phone, you know, for Instagram, for Snapchat, for Twitter, all that stuff. And you start loading all your applications into it. And this is where the Pocophone F1 shines. It performs great. And that's because of that Snapdragon 845 and the eight gigs of RAM, which is the variant that I got. And I had no issues with performance. It didn't lag and it was just smooth throughout everything. Now there is a custom Poco launcher on there and I tried to use it for the first day or so, but I didn't really like it. So I just went ahead and loaded Nova launcher on it and that ran smooth. It had no issues with Nova launcher and I've been using it that like that. So it almost felt like stock Android to me. And 
I haven't had any issues. So that is one place that the Pocophone F1 shines and I can't really praise it anymore because it just flies. So if performance is what you're after and you don't really care about the design or the uh, display being LCD rather than OLED, then definitely consider getting this phone because when it comes to performance, it's top of the line and it just keeps chucking all day. So great performance and it's just flying through everything you throw at it, playing games on it all day, and you're probably wondering how is the battery life? Well, I'm here to tell you that the battery life on the Poco F1 is actually really good. It comes with 4,000 milliamp battery and it lasted me all day. Sometimes I would get five, six hours of screen on time and I would just be, you know, going through the phone without any issues, having it last all day, all night, even sometimes up until midnight or 1 a.m. But my usage has a little asterisk to it and I'm gonna get to that in a little bit later on in the video. But in terms of battery life, I don't think there should be any issues or anything that you should be worried about. And now we get to my favorite part of testing out any cell phone, which is the camera. I just love mobile photography. And the Poco Phone F1 comes with two cameras in the back. You got a 12 megapixel F1.9 main sensor and a five megapixel um, sensor for depth. And then in the front, you got a 20 megapixel F2.0 sensor for selfies. And that one can actually do HDR and record 1080p. And then the one in the back does video of 2160 at 30 frames per second. And then it'll do uh, 1080p video all the way up to slow-mo of 240 frames per second, which is pretty great. But I never really messed with the video portion of the camera. I just like taking pictures. And here's my thoughts on the performance of the Pocophone F1's camera. Overall, it's decent. Like if you took pictures in the middle of the day with good lighting or in a studio setting with really good lighting, then it performs pretty good and it can, you know, be as good as any of the camera phones out there. It may not be as sharp as the Pixel 3 because I do have the Pixel 3, so I was able to compare it to it real quick. And if you guys wanna see like a blind eye test with the Pixel 3 and um, other phones versus the Poco Phone F1, then definitely let me know in the comment section down below and I can whip up a video real quick for you guys. But overall, the camera is pretty good and I would say you can get some good pictures out of it. Now, when you go ahead and start taking night pictures, then it's really a hit or miss. I found a lot of times that I would take a picture in, at night, whether we are at the mall, um, somewhere outside, or wherever it is where it's not really good lighting, and the picture just didn't come out good it's not exposed good and the sharpness is not there so i would take another picture to try to get another picture so there were times where at night i just didn't get the pictures that i would like and then i'd have to retake them multiple times so if you don't mind doing that occasionally at night then this is a camera that is you know okay and that you can get by now if you do compare it to a Pixel or a iPhone 10 or 10s or even the Galaxy Note, then yeah, and you pixel peep, you're definitely gonna realize the difference, you know? But if you just take a picture and you post it on Instagram or you're posting it on social media and it goes through the um, Instagram algorithm with all their compressions, it's gonna take decent pictures and they're gonna come out pretty good. So the Poco Phone F1 is a great phone, uh, especially for that price point, $350. And if you're after performance and battery life, then definitely it's a no-brainer. But for me, I had to put it down and go back to my Pixel 3 for one reason, and that's because it's not supporting the LTE bands that is supported here in the US for my carrier. I use AT&T, and for some reason, the LTE bands that the Pocophone F1 supports are not the same ones as the LTE bands for AT&T. So literally, I was using 3G or HSPA Plus when I was out and about, and trying to go from 4G LTE to 3G, it's, it's a nightmare. So I literally didn't use my phone when I was away from Wi-Fi, whether it was the hotel or at a Starbucks or something, because it's just unusable trying to load up uh, Instagram stories or a quick clip on YouTube while you're riding in an Uber. It was just pretty bad. And that's the reason why I went back to my Pixel 3. So overall, the Poco Phone F1 is a pretty good phone. Like it's coming in at $350. But I feel like it's in a weird spot because for about $175, $180 more, you can get into the OnePlus realm. And I definitely think the OnePlus is worth that extra $180 that you would be spending over the Poco F1. But if you 
definitely can't spend any more than $350, $400, then I would definitely say go pick up this phone. Just make sure that the LTE bands are supported where you live. But overall, I think it's a great phone and I enjoyed using it for the last two weeks. So if you enjoyed this video, then definitely give it a thumbs up. If you're new here to my channel, consider subscribing. And uh, for those that are longtime subscribers, you guys see that the set is a little different and that's because I'm working on, on a whole new studio set. So make sure you guys stay subscribed to the channel and keep it locked because I'm going to be doing a studio tour in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay plugged.